Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Brian Polito, and if you're here for the panel called Calling All Creators, How to Build a Loyal Fan Base from Scratch, you're in the right place. If not, maybe you gotta go to another panel. But before I even begin this panel, I wanna give you an idea of who the heck am I? Why the heck should you listen to a person like me? So let's get into it, shall we? My name is Brian Polito again, I am a 30-year veteran comic book creator. I am known for uh, being the publisher of Coffin Comics, and I'm going to show you some of the work that we did. Um, so I published the characters Evil Ernie, Lady Death, Purgatory. I have been lucky enough to also publish Megadeth, Insane Clown Posse. Please uh, take in. been lucky enough to have an animated movie of my character, Lady Death been part of a lot of cool projects. I've also been a writer, so I've written Nightmare on Elm Street, gosh, all kinds of stuff. Texas Chainsaw Massacre for comics. I published Halloween for comics. Friday the 13th. I wrote The Supernaturals for Marvel. And I've been uh, very, very blessed to create entire universes of comics. So that's one part. Now that's in my past. Now, more recently, I've actually been the publisher of Coffin Comics, and I'll show you some of the Coffin Comics work that we've done. And we're actually in our facility called HQ. So, yeah, feast your eyes on some of the material that we've done here at Coffin Comics. A whole range of graphic novels with the character Lady Death. And I'm also happy and sort of braggadocious to say we have worked with some of the legends of our industry. J. Scott Campbell, Mark Silvestri, Adam Hughes, Michael Turner, and a host of others. We've also published characters like La Muerta and Hell Witch. Now, you may be looking at the material I produce and say, why should I listen to this guy? This guy's stuff is crazy. It's edgy. It's not my stuff. Well, I'll tell you why you should consider it. I'm a 30-year veteran comic book creator who has been able to passionately make whatever the heck it is that I want. So if you're similar and you have your own path and you have your own stuff that you want to publish, you might want to listen to a guy like me because strangely, I've been able to do it. In, in this panel, I'm going to show you how you can do it too. So that's a little bit of my background and that's kind of my disclaimer. It's like uh, you may not want to publish what I publish and I appreciate that, but you might have your own path and your own journey and I'm going to show you exactly how to build your fan base from scratch. So let's get right into it, shall we? Rule number one, that is make memorable stuff that people want. Now, that might just seem painfully obvious, but really it's critical because if people don't like what it is that you're making, you don't want to make it because there won't be enough people to enjoy it. So let me explain what I mean. Comic books, like other entertainment art forms, really occur in some sort of a genre, whether it's superhero, mystery, detective, historical, personal, and that's how people tend to like to enjoy them. Sometimes it's fun to mix them up as well. But if I was a creator starting out and I made something and as hard as I tried, I couldn't get people to respond, how I take that is the market simply isn't interested. And then I make a course correction and I move on. And if you want a fan base, you need something that people want. So that's how I would take that. So another way to look at it is, well, shoot, that's almost the whole ball of wax, right? If people don't like what you're offering, you got to pivot and move on. Let me give you a small example. Early in my career, I was set up at a convention, and I had a table of prints. There's another character I'm associated with who has his own cult following named Evil Ernie. And we're offering about four or five Evil Ernie prints and way in the beginning, we were offering one Lady Death print for sale at a con, early 90s Southern California. Well, over the course of a day, we saw these Lady Death prints sell like hotcakes. And Evil Ernie was selling just fine, but man, there was something about that Lady Death. And that was some real life, on the ground marketing and data that told us, wow, maybe we should kind of lean into doing more Lady Death. So that's actually what we did. So there is, sometimes you have young creators who have the energy, the excitement, and the drive, but sometimes they hold on to that one idea just a little too long. And if you do not get the market to respond to it, 
I say course correct and move on, right? So use that drive in another way. I also, so this is tangential to building a fan base, but something for your consideration. That idea that you have the, the one great idea, please give that up as soon as you can. You are in the business of, business of ideas, so keep coming up with new stuff all the time. Surprise yourself. Make that just part of your talent uh, because it's never the one thing. Uh, so that's a piece of that. So really make memorable stuff that people want because, again, if you don't, you know, where's that really going to put you? Um, what other, what other do I, things do I have to say about that piece? Yeah, I think that's, that's really the key. It's... Uh, so again, comics operate inside genre. They operate inside of, uh, could be a Western. It could be, uh, could be a love story, a mystery. Again, a personal story, a personal journey, because personal comics are quite awesome also. But they got to be memorable. And if uh, they don't hook people soon, within the first couple of years of you doing them, maybe the market's just telling you there's other stories that you might need to tell. So moving on. The next one, create a memorable brand. Create a memorable brand for yourself. Now, if uh, my cameraman, Mr. Jimmy Coffin, would back up a little bit, I'm going to sort of show you my brand. I have a long history of being associated with the colors black, white, and red, and skulls, and everything heavy metal, and crazy, and loud. And I'm not trying to be cynical when I say brand. I actually actually have not used that word personally until it was time to do this panel, but I think that word brand is a, a really good word to how do you put yourself together and present yourself. Um, I like these particular associations, and again, not for you, I get it, but maybe what is your brand? Now, a great example of a brand might be the band KISS, at least in my world. I love KISS. Just imagine, go back into the 70s when this band shows up in kabuki makeup and has the audacity to have uh, fire and spit blood. It's just so identifiable that it actually attracts people. Now, it may not attract you, but you can't deny that KISS just attracts people. So that people like myself who love and adore KISS, man, we just went to them. Now, a friend of mine, very astutely, a guy in marketing, astutely made this interesting observation. He said, if... Uh, what did he say? It was pretty cool in terms of branding. What he said was, if a, band, if, a, if a brand like ours, Coffin Comics, teamed up with Nike, they could totally see what that sneaker would look like. Made perfect sense. However, if a brand like Hilton Hotels teamed up with Nike to make sneakers, just had a hard time visualizing what that could be. So. Branding is like very instantaneous identification, and it really comes in handy in the super fast world of online, right? Like people are making snap decisions about things, and we all see what attracts us in just the blink of an eye. So your branding might be no branding. That's fine, too. It's just something to consider. Let me give you some other examples. I think a very, very meaningful brand for me was when seven very popular artists from Marvel Comics defected and formed this comic company called Image Comics. So those guys were so identifiable with superhero comics, they had the audacity to form their own venture and make their own superhero comics. And it was one of the first times I had put the face to the creation. And they became rock stars to me. And you, you guys and gals, if you're in comics, you at least are on the peripheral of knowing the guys, you know, Mark Silvestri, Mick Farlane, Jim Lee, Jim Valentino, Eric Larson, uh, Jim Valentino. These were the key guys of image. And boy, you could just see their face and see their creation and go, wow, that is a, a remarkable brand. And I think that brand coming up on its 30th anniversary next year in 2022 has really stood the test of time. You just, you just get it solidly. Look at other comic book companies in how they brand themselves. Another example, clearly Marvel in DC, whether it's the coloring, the graphics, the type of comics they put out. Let's take DC for example. In the past, they had their main superheroic universe, but when they did darker material, they felt compelled to make yet another brand within the brand, which would be Vertigo. 
And it's sort of like you think the word vertigo, you almost instantaneously imagine the books they put out. Preacher, Sandman. And you could apply that to yourself. Another example uh, to me, the company Boom. Just the name, Boom. It just calls you. It's sort of fun. And they do tend to put out really fun stuff, whether it's their licensed books like Power Rangers, some of their new initiatives. It's just usually in the domain of fun. So I think branding is really important. Even if you're an individual creator, you can really get a lot of mileage and a lot of, uh, you can be very memorable if you choose to have a brand. So that's rule number two. Rule number three, build word of mouth and get out there. So what do I mean by that? Now we're really getting to the heart of how to build a loyal fan base. We're saying that you have something people want or you're test marketing it out there and you have a brand, you have a feel, you have a vibe, how you present yourself. Now, how do you get that word of mouth? So several key ways. And, and let me back up one other minute. The other thing that occurs to me is this panel is largely about the philosophy of building out your fan base. The nuts and bolts, you know, how to start a Facebook account, I'm not getting into that because I actually assert that the philosophy is more important than those mechanical items. When you get your philosophy set, that is going to be your guidepost to how you can achieve the results you're out to achieve. So again, we're looking at build word of mouth. How do you do that? I'm going to tell you. How I did it in my case was very simple. First comic I ever put out, it was published by a company called Malibu Graphics in early 1991. And it was called Evil Ernie. And how I decided to build my career is I actually bought copies of that comic from Malibu and then I went out to comic book conventions and I resold them. And I hand sold this comic book in the Southern California area for a period of 18 months and did something kooky like 52 in stores and conventions. And sometimes I'd show up and there'd be a good amount of people and then sometimes I'd show up and there'd be one or two. But no matter who showed up, man, I played like it was Madison Square Garden to these people. To, to seduce them into the vision of what I was presenting. So in today's world, you could take that same sort of enthusiasm and when we are safely able to, definitely show up at the conventions, but also clearly social media is an amazing way to get the word of mouth out. Now again, this panel is particular to comic books, physical floppies, as opposed to web comics, which is another, another avenue, or even all different forms of entertainment. These are about comics. So in the domain of uh, social media, I say choose a couple platforms that really speak to you. It could be Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, pick them. And maybe not do just one. So let's just take a social media presence. Uh, you pick a main one, let's say in your case it's Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube. Now you're putting out communications incessantly. Now look, you're competing with every form of entertainment, whether it's reaction videos, bikini shots, major news media. But I think what people want to see from you as a creator is, what are you about? What is your process? So you're putting out messages all the time, every day. And one of the easiest things to do is just talk about your process and how you're going about your process every day. Now, the cool thing is, and again, maybe this is the one technical thing, you could actually link a lot of your social media. And in that case, I suggest a software like Hootsuite. You could put out a message on one platform and it could actually propagate onto other platforms. And I think that's very useful because people are wherever they are. They're not necessarily always where you want them to be, they're just wherever they are. So, Again, so getting back to the basic premise, building word of mouth, get out there. So what could you be talking about? You can be talking about everything about the process of making your comic and the journey of you making your comic. So for example, you could be showing some pieces of the script. You could be showing some of the pages, the color, the lettering, visiting the printer. That process is really enriching to people. You know, driving up to pick up the comics, all that kind of stuff I think is fun. Now, in my personal philosophy, I believe that you should consider doing all of that as if it is an aspirational journey. And I'm a stickler about stuff like this. Because shouldn't comics be fun? And does, isn't it more attractive when human beings are kind of having fun and have an aspirational journey? 
There's two ways of doing a live video about picking up your comics. I'm going to I'm going to ask you to consider which one is the one that's probably going to attract more people. Version one. Oh man, I got to get the uh, pick up the comics. My car's a wreck. My kid is you know sick and. Man, I get in the car and the car's messed up and I drive over and nothing's ready and then you know I get an argument with the printer and then I pick up the books so that's one version here's another I get in the car I, I feed my son I drive over the car breaks down but it doesn't matter I put the, a little more oil and I get back in the car and I drive and then I show up and the printer's not entirely ready that's no big deal I throw in I help I get my hands dirty I get my hands wet and I start getting it together and then I finally secure my comics. So I would assert to you that you probably like the second version which is you're watching a person who's on a journey. We all like the journey. We all like stories about journeys, right? All dating all the way back to the Odyssey. You know, we don't want to hear other people bitch, moan, whine and complain. You know why? Because life is so hard to begin with. So if you're a compa creator, I guess one of my like thousand dollar tips is make it fun for people. Because look, I think it's a given that life is challenging, life is hard, and not everything is easy, it doesn't come to you, but why not have fun while you're doing it? So again, rule three, build word of mouth, get out there. And here's the challenging news. When you're putting out your message, never stop. As many messages that have value to people as you can. People like to, people get behind people who are on a journey who are usually on a positive vision about things. And I believe, in terms of building a fan base from scratch, if you're on a positive journey and you seduce people with your vision of your story, your comic, your art, they're really going to come along for the ride, no matter who they are. Now, this is another tangential thought to this piece, which is consider who is your intended audience. So I think unconsciously, when I began my career, I imagined my in intended audience, and that would be the entire audience that's at a Motley Crue show. It's just how I see it. Now, that doesn't mean that, strangely and interestingly, among our crowd, not everybody is into that. But I think people appreciate that I'm into it. <laughs> like I, early on, the band Ghost is very popular now, but I was into this band Ghost when like no one was into it, and I would share my enthusiasm. And I would get comments from uh, people on my feeds, and they're like, I don't know who they are, but I'm just happy that you're happy. So something for you to consider. So that is only rule number three, get out there. Rule number four, be your own PR firm. That's right, public relations firm. Look, in the beginning, not everyone is going to be tooting your horn, so it's going to be really up to you. So that means everything from formal press releases announcing that you are releasing a product into a given market. It could be the conventional comic shop market. And honestly, even if you're starting from scratch, you could send what is called a query, pardon me, a query letter to a given website and say, will you accept press releases for, from new creators for products? Um, and if you don't know how to do a press release, no problem. You could actually go on the web and, and look for a thing called a press release generator. And it'll show you exactly how to make a press release. Now, when I say PR firm, I don't mean just conventional press releases. In between you, me, and the wall, our company gave up doing press releases about seven years ago. And it doesn't seem to have hurt us. So what I mean by being your own public relations firm is always be getting the word of mouth out about what you're doing all the time, never stopping, even if you're tired, even if it's at the end of the day, even if the kids haven't been fed, the dogs have been fed, you're aching, you're tired, it's been a long day, do it. And consider this, really. As a creator, you're entering into a field that is fiercely competitive. And you have people like me who are willing to work longer, harder, faster, stronger, for much longer duration, periods of time. I don't say this as a brag. I'm just letting you know. And I'm not the only one. There's just a lot of people, man. We're like dogs that are trying to get a bone all the time. We're like sharks. That's your competition. That and Instagram models and giant news events. So you do have to be kind of dogged in your determination because, you know, again, people like me and others, it's like we ain't stopping for anybody. So just, just jump in, 
Start driving fast and never stop for all time. <laughs> so again, be your own PR firm. Uh, it's an ongoing thing. And I'm not trying to scare you off. I'm not trying to daunt you. I'm not trying to be braggadocious. I'm just sort of laying it out there. It's, uh, it's a competitive field. And uh, that's that piece. Be your own PR firm. Next up, your email list rules. This is rule number five. And if I were to say, ultimately, if any one rule is the most important, I think it's this rule. This rule, man, your email list rules, your obsession in life should be to sign people up to your email list. So let me get mildly technical, an email list. You're probably going to need a website, even the simplest WordPress one. Get a website going up, name it your brand, your name, your whatever, and then get an email piece of software. Our company uses MailChimp. We've had great success with it for over the course of seven years plus. And I believed in email my entire professional career since I could have email. So that's dating back to the 90s. So why do I say that? In today's, today's world, people who opt in for email communication from you about what you're up to have taken a step towards being enrolled in what you do already. Over there in the world of social media, you could have 20, you know, 100,000 Twitter followers, but I'm here to let you know that they are not as invested as unless they are on your, they sign up for your email. There is just an investment that a human being makes to sign up to an email list. I could say that for myself. I'm signed up to a couple dozen in different uh, arenas and I want the news from those folks. So this should be your obsession. Get people to sign up for your email list uh, and provide fresh content every week at the very least. So in our case, what we do is we know we draft up a communication on Monday. We revise it slightly on Tuesday. There's a different communication on Wednesday. Honestly, we communicate all the time. We do try to keep the news fresh, interesting, insightful, sneak peeks, what's going on. So you might say to yourself, what's a person's incentive to sign up to your email list? Well, that's up to you. So some of the things that we do to this day to get people incentivized onto our email list is we might give away a free digital comic book sampler, which gives people a sense of what it is that we do. And we will scour the web for those folks. We will, we will do paid social advertising to find people to see if we can get them in what's called our sales funnel. If we can get them signed up into our email list, that means they're part of a community and then they could consider our wares, consider what we have to offer. And I could tell you through thick and thin that the email list is king. Let me give you an example. It's totally braggy. Running a current Lady Death Kickstarter campaign, it's clocking in at about 320,000 in eight days. And I would assert to you that the communication that we're able to have through our email list and actually through the list, uh, the updated list of our previous Kickstarter campaigns is very what I call sticky and people are interested and it really helps us for our repeat business and keep people keeping our community engaged. Whereas let's say I'll do a live video on Facebook. I get like two or three or four or 500 views. I don't know in the rare case 5,000. I just don't think that is the avenue where people listen with more authority. I think it really occurs in those email lists. And I mean, I think we could just see it empirically. We always say in our company, mailing list is king. So I could keep spending more time on this, but induce people to sign up, establish an email list, use something like MailChimp. What's great about companies like MailChimp is if you only have a certain amount of people who are signing up, uh, it's free. And it only, they only start charging you once you have a whole bunch of people. And by then, that means you could probably afford to pay for that email list. So pay for it because it's great. The email list through thick and thin, summer, winter, is the king. If there's any takeaway from this panel, this is the $1,000 piece. And I got to tell you, you'd be so surprised at how many small, and medium, and even large sized companies miss this piece because I don't even know if I should be telling you this because this is the big one. Mailing list is king. It's 
very sticky. When people opt in, they're just much more invested. So um, keep your mailing list going. Provide free content, ongoing content. Never stop. Never drop out of communication. Make a commitment to yourself. If you're going to do anything in the course of a year, you're going to provide new content via your email list every week without fail. We do not take off ever. We don't take off for, for Christmas. We don't take off for anything. We actually just do two or three at a time and then just spool them out. So make sense? Rule number six, be authentic, be trustworthy, and be disciplined. So let me explain what I mean by be authentic. I have a lot to say on this particular topic. So I think if you want to tell comic book stories, you're a certain sort of person. You could have chosen to do anything else in your life, you know, doctor, lawyer, Indian chief, basketball player, whatever. But for some reason, this form is attractive to you. So that being the case, you tell the stories you want to tell. Do not ever try to guess the market. Don't be cynical. Don't say, superheroes are hot, I'm going to tell a superhero story. Because by the time you get your superhero story done, that's less hot and people are on to the next thing. The thing that I believe will help you stand the test of time as a creator who can build a giant fan base is being your authentic self and telling the stories that you want to tell. So look, in my case, I get it. I don't, I don't write a story that's like war and peace. I'm probably not going to get an Eisner Award. Who knows? Maybe down the line a lifetime achievement. But I really love the stories that I tell. This is the kind of stuff that I'm really into. Um, and your mileage may vary. And I think that's what's great about comics. You might have a story to tell in a different genre that's never been told before. You have this burning desire to tell a given story or a universe worth of stories. And I encourage you to do that. Do the thing that your heart tells you to do. And the reason I say that is there are going to be challenges along the way. And there are going to be times where you're going to be stopped cold. And the thing that is going to keep you going is that passion, that heart that initial excitement you had to tell the story in the first place. I guarantee you, you'll remember that part. When there, when there comes that time when you were just stopped dead in your tracks, the, the fire is the thing that's going to keep you going. So do not try to second guess the market. Be yourself. Tell the stories you want to sell, tell. So be trustworthy. Now, again, going back to the basic premise of our panel, which is how to build a fan base from scratch, being trustworthy is key. Being transparent is key. If you're a liar or a cheat, if you fall off the map, if you promise people stuff and you don't do it, if you're supposed to hire people and you mess up, you disappear, it's very hard to build momentum. But I believe that if you're trustworthy and transparent, and if you do what you say you will do, you really start reaping the rewards. Now look, I'm an older person. I've been through some stuff, ups and downs. I even had a business bankruptcy in 2002. And I have learned firsthand the failings of not being trustworthy, whether it was intentional or not. And I believe what I've learned is you do everything in your power to be your word. And if you can't be your word, at least manage your word. So as a small example, we were publishing a book and uh, a printer uh, chose, chose not to uh, print it or they wanted us to change it due to content. Well, I couldn't do that. I had to publish the book that I wanted to publish, so I had to find a new printer. So I communicated that to our backers on a crowdfunding campaign and said, look, here's exactly what's happening. Are you guys okay with it? It's probably going to mean a six-week delay. And people gave their feedback. Generally, everyone was favorable. And that kept me in communication and transparent. So I think there is, an, there is a concept called speed of trust, and uh, something you might want to consider looking into as a sidebar. But if you can be your word, and do what you say you will do, I believe you could really build momentum. Now, I could probably do a whole other panel about trust and being your word, at least in the domain of publishing, because, man, sometimes that really means a lot. Like, if you're going to be trustworthy as a publisher, if you say something's coming out in March, boy, you got to do everything, everything sufficient to getting that done. And that means a lot of promises, a lot of stuff getting in place, and you got to take that kind of point seriously. But again, I don't want to beleaguer this point because this is just a broad panel, but I believe being trustworthy is, uh, is key. And I'm not really holding myself out like some sort of angel. I'm human, and I've also made mistakes, but I believe that there's a lot 
to being trustworthy to create a fan base from scratch. Being disciplined. If you are part of this tradition of telling stories on any kind of consistent basis, whether it's once a year, once a month, once a week, in the case of web comics, boy, you're going to have to be disciplined. And that means you got to show up and do the work. And you, you just have to be utterly consistent. So I believe being methodical is helpful. Being consistent. So if you say it, you're going to do it. And being consistent helps your fan base know that you're going to show up when you say you show up. So your new content every Wednesday. I'm shipping stuff every month, quarterly, biannually, yearly. As long as they know, and as long as you're consistent, you become count onable. So let's take a hypothetical. We publish four uh, 48 to 64 page books a year, every quarter. And we've gotten into this rhythm over the course of five or six years, now going on to seven, where people can kind of count on that rhythm. Very consistent. So everybody knows like every season, more or less, we're releasing something new. And that really just helps ferment in people's brains, that degree of consistency and count onableness. So I would assert to you that that would really help. So, and then, yes, and that speaks to that real main concept, which is being disciplined. Do you guys and gals out there ever have those days where you wake up and you're like, wow, I'd really just like to go back and take a nap, or maybe I could just like uh, take it easy? Uh, I think the difference between people who do average and people who do extraordinary is being disciplined. Um, this sounds obnoxious, but it's very difficult to expect profound results from an average effort. So I think just being disciplined and methodical, as unfun as that sounds, is really the difference between good and great, or maybe uh, great and unbelievable. So discipline helps. and holding yourself to account, not letting yourself off the hook. Uh, a lot of my contemporaries or peers or people I know who have achieved something in the world of comics have been very comfortable with repetition, showing up and doing the work. Um, I could name check tons. So there's just a lot of people who are willing to put in the work. So just join up, surrender. I just surrender myself completely to doing my work and I love it. Rule number seven. Work hard, stay humble. That's a real simple one. Uh, I don't think there's really avoiding work in the domain of comics. I do think if, uh, if you have a chance of doing something else where it's easier, go for it. But I'm, I guess I'm from an older generation now. I'm about 59 years old, born in 1960. And I was kind of raised in that time where it's you got to put 10,000 hours to master something. And I still feel pretty good about that. Now, I guess like if I was born with a beautiful, if I was born like a beautiful man or woman with a bikini body, I could be on Instagram and get instant followers. That's a new era. I'm fine with that too. But I just come from a different time. And comics seem to really uh, work into that premise where I put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of hours, and now I just got to continue it. Like there's no not work hard with comics. Maybe you take a little time off every once in a while, but look. If you're the writer, you got to face the page. If you're an artist, you got to face the page. If you're a letter, you got to face the page. If you're a colorist, you got to face the page. If you're a publisher, you got to put it all together, staple it or glue it. There's no way around it. So, uh, yes, work hard and then stay humble. Here's one other thing. I hope that you achieve all your hopes and dreams in the world of comics. I hope you become an unparalleled success. But I also hope for you that you simply become humble because here's the great thing. That unparalleled success is great that you've shown some mastery in a, in a certain world, but it um, doesn't make anyone better than anybody. And uh, life, is, life is strange, man. Life will, life will, I think when you're cocky, uh, you could get knocked down by life. And look, it's just, it's just things that happen. I don't know if that's a strange philosophy, but uh, one thing that I always say is that I always come humble before the comic gods because they're capricious. And if you show signs of ego, they're going to knock you down and remind you that you're just a, a human being. So, uh, so you know, work hard and be humble, man. Love the work. The allocades are nice. Signing things are nice. Meeting people, boy, that's nice, man. You're spending a whole weekend at a con, people loving your stuff. I totally remember the ex first ever experience of a person commenting on a comic I did. You know, and I felt that prior to comics, I was living, I was kind of in managerial jobs, believe it or not. Like, I, w I worked in the movie business, commercials, music videos, feature films. 
and I was what's called an assistant director, and it was really managerial, it wasn't particularly creative. So I make Evil Ernie, I'm promoting the first issue in Southern California at a place called the Shrine Auditorium, I have my books laid out, and this guy comes up and he's like, hey, you the guy that did that Evil Ernie? I'm like, yeah, and he's like, not bad. And that was my first compliment. I always remember to remember the guy's face, and I was like, I'll take it, not bad. So uh, it, has its, it has its own pleasures, man. So work hard, stay humble, it's just comics. On the one hand, it's like, oh my God, it's comics. And on the other hand, it's like, it's just comics. So uh, you know, it's the, it's the profession that we chose. And then, in conclusion, rule number eight. Repeat, rules number one through seven. So honestly, there's no real quick fix around building a fan base from scratch. Uh, it takes a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of dedication and a lot of stick to itiveness. My model for building a fan base has always been rock and roll bands. Because I kind of view the world through the lens of uh, horror movies, rock and roll, professional wrestling, this kind of stuff. And when I began my career, I just thought about bands and how they had to begin by playing to 10 people like here and then 20 people there and then 50, then 100, and they just built it up. And you know, as recently as the last 10 years, I've watched that band Ghost do it, where I've, I've seen Ghost with only 200 people, but then I've also seen Ghost in an arena. So uh, that's how I view it. So it's not an overnight thing. It takes some dedication. And look, not everybody wins the tournament, but many, many people do. And it could be you. If you apply the rules that I have just laid out to you, for uh, during this panel. So in conclusion, question and answer period. So I'm going to do my best to guess a couple questions and answers. And I'm going to do it by taking a look at some of the previous rules. So building word of mouth, getting out there. Again, you know, in a practical sense, choose some social media, sign up for that stuff, build a website, get a mailing list, and then start communicating. And be about something. My personal view, you know, it's crazy. I'm known for doing like dark supernatural comics. My comics are crazy, man. You know, they're bloody, they're violent, they're kind of uh, all the hot emotions, you know. We do sex, we do violence, but, you know, generally, I'm on a positive note. So consider your brand, you know, what would it be about? Be authentic. You know, again, the question would be, I want to do X comic. And I'm like, as long as it's coming from your heart, it's completely worth doing. Because again, it's going to take a lot of effort, so you better love it. Because there are going to be times where you're tested. Be your own PR firm. Well, again, I was recommending doing things like uh, building a list for, uh, for making press releases. And you can just go online and Google search press release generator. And they'll show you the format, write some press releases send what's called query letters to the various news sites, see if they will market and promote um, new creators. And I think this speaks to like um, obsession, you know, just to be really obs obsessed. Now, in no way, shape, or form should you interpret what I'm saying as to be a pest to people and to be uh, obnoxious, but you could just be appropriate. You know, hey, do you do this? They either do or they don't. They'll, they'll take your press release or they won't. Don't get personal about it. If they don't, they don't. I mean, I got to tell you, I'm 30 years in the comics game. I learned simply not to send press releases to all the major news media, because largely all they do is cover comic books that are uh, like the Marvel, DC, the big wig corporate owned comics. So well, what's the point? I just put that effort into speaking and communicating to our fans. So that's what I would do. So that's just a couple of um, Q and A's. And in conclusion, what I want to say to you is good luck. So. You're at the beginning of the journey or somewhere in the journey. I do hope that this communication has helped. And heck, man, all I got to tell you is I'm Brian Polito, publisher of Coffin Comics, creator of Lady Death and other assorted fun things. I hope you have a wonderful career. And thank you so much for joining in on my panel today.